Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Thoughtful Salt. And today we're doing a bit of a more personal video on a game that is attached to considerable amount of controversy on the internet. Some real, some imaginary. I'm not going to touch on those con on those controversies in this video though. I just feel that when you're talking about a game especially one that deals with something as personal as this, it is best not to dwell on outside influences that have nothing to do with the game itself in terms of its controversies. Now, there are far more knowledgeable people than I who have commented on Zoe Quinn and her shenanigans, but I shall not, so I'm just going to focus on the game I very much promise this has nothing to do with any of the controversy surrounding her or this game. This is just me playing through it and relating to it in the only way that I can for a game called Depression Quest. So, the goal of this game, as you can see on the screen, is they want to illustrate as clearly as possible what depression is like. Now, the death of Robin Williams a week or so ago proved that depression is a disease that has no filters. It does not just attack poor people, it, just, it, just does, it, it doesn't just attack lazy people. It attacks everyone, no matter how successful they are, no matter how happy they seem to be, depression attacks everyone, equally, indiscriminately. Now, it's only in the past decade or so, and possibly really only within the past half decade, that depression has started to be seen in a different light. Before, people who suffer from depression were just lazy, were just obsessed with themselves, could not get over themselves. And that probably caused a lot of suffering in the sufferers of depression. Because, well, it's easy to feel alone utterly alone when you're attacked on all sides f due to something that you're suffering from that you can't even under begin to understand. It's, it's a, de and it, a depression is an experience that just sucks the life out of you. It truly, truly does. So we are going to play this game and I'm going to try and, um, uh, relate to you as best I can, and also critique the game, well, if possible, so. Shift, backspace, advanced passage. Okay, return. I played this game before, I played it to completion. I didn't really think much of it at the time, though. Possibly because I was going through some issues of my own at the time, and I didn't really need a game like this. But at the current time, when I'm still going through the aftershocks of my own experience with this disease, I am trying to realize my place in the world, my goals, my responsibilities to you, my viewers, to 2-dash-dash.com, to, to everything really, to life. This game, I, this experience I'm going to have with you right now is, I think, much needed therapy for myself, and I apologize if it gets too personal, but... We shall try not to make it too awkward for you, I hope. So let's begin. So I'm not going to read these out because I, as some people have said, that's an example of a bad let's play, but I'll leave these on screen for just long enough, I think, for us to be able to get a sense of what the text says, and I shall let you know what choices I make and my thought processes behind them. So. Depression, I think, is an insidious disease because it can sneak up on you.
Now I wish I could actually highlight certain passages of text while I was playing, but uh, yeah, this right here is basically a paragraph that sums up my experience with depression. Well, half of it. I mean, there's obviously other symptoms. It's like, but you end up blaming yourself for a lot of things. Motivation becomes a real issue. You lose passion for a lot of things. You lose lots of sleep. And your parents... Yeah. People will see this. People will see you with your loss of motivation. They'll see you with your lack of energy. With your lack of motivation for anything, really. And they'll just... They'll draw from their own experiences and they'll probably if they're blue collar workers or they're people who work really really hard for a living they will not be sympathetic towards you a lot of times now i'm just speaking from my own experiences but obviously the person who wrote this section of the game knew people who had experienced stuff like this as well so Mm-hmm. It's a fog. It really is a fog. Project. Yeah. You got... You have to... Find something when you're in the midst of depression. A light at the end of the tunnel. Some kind of activity... Something that brings your energy up just working on it. For me, that really is the video series that I, I do on YouTube. It got me through some tough times. Demo Man, Why Haven't I Played? The recent Let's Play and Discuss series that I started with a friend. You have to find something. You really do have to find something. It's hard. It really is hard. I can imagine two decades ago it would have been harder to find or not as easy to find stuff to interest you, to grab onto and try and pull yourself out. But, yeah. It's. That's why it's insidious. Like, even when you find that thing, you have to try and keep your motivation levels up, which is why I. Ha I'm very, very sorry that um, Why Haven't I Played is has been delayed so much. A lot of things in my life have been delayed. I haven't even been able to compose a shred of music for the past couple months or so, the one exception being the TDS podcast music. It's debilitating. I, I, I apologize. I really should be getting more content out there, but the level of energy I have on a daily basis is nowhere near where I want it to be. And everything just slips. Yep. Yep, that's... Yep. So what do I do here? Now, the Depression Quest, along with the text, features kind of like a Greek chorus at the very, very bottom that tells you your condition and your treatment, what levels of treatment you are going, you're using to try and, uh, sorry, using to try and overcome this disease. So, I'm going to... Yeah, that seems more like my mindset in a situation where I'm coming home from work and I do do this a lot. <sighs> Just a half hour of TV. Yep. Sorry if I'm scrolling too fast. <sighs> this is... 
yeah, I waste a lot of hours doing stupid stuff. It's, it's like I said, the motivation levels, they just get, once you see the amount of work ahead of you, it, it can get overwhelming. Some of it is admittedly, yes, a bit of laziness, but I can't help but feel something niggling in the back of my brain when I'm going through situations like this that I could be getting stuff done, but the stress, the stress really gets to you. Like right now I have literally three podcasts to edit for the Let's Play and Discuss series. I have articles to write for 2-dash.com find myself doing this as a form of, I don't know, self-therapy, I guess, trying to work myself back into the rhythm of getting out these regular productions like I used to. Yeah. Yeah. Next. It's a mild Friday afternoon. <sighs> what do you do? Now, usually, over the past couple months or something, I've had a few opportunities to hang out with a select few people. And uh, sometimes I'm really... No matter, no matter how much sleep I get, I always seem exhausted. I feel exhausted. No matter how much sleep I get, no matter how well rested I am, there's always something that exhausts me all the time. I don't know what. But I'm going to agree to go in this situation. Now, the thing about this game is it does have background audio, like a very ambient kind of audio, like situational ambient audio. Now you can see some choices, I should have pointed this out before, are crossed out, which means you can't choose them. And the writing in this game seems to have improved because I don't recognize one of some of the situations that come up since the last time I played this. Enthusiastically socialize, yeah. you. Especially with my condition, Asperger's Syndrome. It is very, very hard to enthusiastically socialize with anybody. And when you're depressed, it's just a bigger hole you gotta try and climb out of, so... I'll choose number four. Yep. When you're in a crowd and you have Asperger's plus depression if you don't know anyone at a huge social situation she you can become flustered you don't know anyone and you're not sure that anyone wants to talk to you and it kind of like snowballs from there it's a vicious cycle of non-socialization Yep. That would be my state. That would be my state of mind at the moment, right there. Most days, these days. So, the reason I'm back in Vancouver instead of living with my parents, or actually my dad and my stepmother. It's a very important distinction. Um, is because my uh, stepmother and dad didn't quite understand what I was going through. To them, depression, they were very much blue collar workers, welders. So they worked hard every day, and I understood that they worked hard every day. 
they took my lack of motivation, my lack of energy, my constant need to just sleep to try and get my energy back. It, they took it as laziness and nothing else. They didn't see any other reason for my problems. I told my dad I had depression once, and I'll get to that later, but um, it, it just becomes hard for people to understand what you have. They don't understand it because they don't have it at the moment. And if someone's trying to criticize you while you have depression, um, it's very hard to take any criticism because you know that people are right, yet you, you don't have the energy, the motivation to do anything about it. Even if you wanted to. You can try and force yourself, but you can only force yourself so much before the fight just becomes overwhelming. You know? Yep. I'm avoiding that conversation because that's pretty much exactly what happened to me. Now, I wish people would have small talk with me. Like, I do have small talk with co-workers, but um, generally I, uh, I have to bug my friends just to have a conversation with them. None of my friends actually contact me. Like, every once in a while, yes, you will get a message or two, but it's like every once in a while, but no one... <sighs> Let's move on. How do you feel about cats? <laughs> I actually do like cats. Just to... I used to not be a cat person, but I got a... I had, when I was living with my dad and my stepmother, they had a cat called Sammy. And every time I came home, it was my responsibility to feed it, make sure that its kitty litter was taken care of. And every time I came home, she would come up right up to me and whine for food. And eventually, because I was sleeping in the basement where she lived as well, she would cuddle up to me when I was... Um, trying to sleep and I eventually became a cat person <laughs> become a cat owner I shall <laughs> they had a dog too named Duke it was a boxer and I love boxers they're a very energetic sort of dog but when you don't you have to have motivation to and energy to be able to match their energy and motivation and I just never had any to be able to have fun with the dog, you know? <sighs> yeah, Wikipedia binges. Yep. I wish I could have taken Sammy with me here to Vancouver. They told me you could keep the cat if you could find a place for pets, but I wasn't able to secure a place in time. So, no cats. Yep. Now, this bottom paragraph, I have some experience with. Ask her if she's happy. I'm an inquisitive, curious person. <laughs> yep, that'd be exactly the sort of situation I'd find myself in, ladies and gentlemen. It's a breezy Sunday afternoon. 
I wish I could open up with people a lot, but you know, when you have this sort of thing, you're afraid. You're very much afraid that people, and especially in my situation, when I have very little contact with other people, even though, even if I bug them or like send a message and say, hey, what's up? No one responds to me. Test the waters and open up a little, hoping she'll understand. I wish people would understand sometimes. Now, reading up on depression online, it, you get a sense that a lot of people still don't understand what it's like. And I did an informal poll at work. I asked a couple of the people if they thought that the person who was depressed, if the depression was their fault. Now, I asked a group of about 10 people. It's a small sample size, I know. And three people answered yes. Three people. And the interesting thing is they were all women. Too so. No, I'm not. I'm not trying to make a point. I'm sorry if it came across like that, but it just goes to show that the understanding still needs to get out there. I mean, now the people who answered no were, interestingly enough, usually older people. Like they were well beyond their fifties and seventies. So maybe I don't know. They've had some experiences with this sort of thing or. If they're just kind in there as they're getting older. I don't know. But it was young-ish kind of women who answered yes. In their late 30s, early 30s, I think the three of them were, so. And one of them was actually kind of a jerk to me, actually, when, too, before that. Like, I remembered her from encounters before that, too, so. Sometimes it's just no helping people. Oh no, it was just a cleaning, yeah. Sometimes, you, when you're depressed, like, it's like I said, you have this fear that if you tell anyone, they'll throw it back in your face, you know? And what I've gone through has, it's been more or less that. It's a dry Sunday morning. good that the cat is there, I guess. <sighs> yeah, so I promised I'd try not to make this awkward, so... I just want to point out that the writing for this is actually really good. Maybe I'm just coming at it from the position of experience, but it's almost like it is speaking to me, yet it's, like, broad enough to be able to speak to a lot of people. And it's free, too. You don't have to pay a dime to play this on Steam. Appointment day, head to the therapist's office. Now, the thing about me is, if I make appointments, I generally am very focused on trying to get there on time. Mm. 
Now, the, the top gray box right here, this sort of Greek cores, I think that's my state of conditioning right now. It's physically and mental exhaustion. Physical and mental exhaustion is very, very big part of all this. And I, I gotta tell you viewers, I got hundreds of games on my Steam library in my Xbox 360 downloaded. I got hundreds of discs all ready for your viewing pleasure. And I haven't been able to motivate myself to even play games sometimes for the viewer. I play games for myself a lot just to try and get rid of some of the stress hanging around me, but it's very hard to find motivation to actually play games for the viewer and craft them in the series. I've thrown out hundreds of gigabytes of footage because I haven't been able to surmount the workload. It's just too much for me right now. <sighs> yeah, this happens a lot. You can't even get up out of bed sometimes. And some people will say, well, just get out of bed. I wish it was that simple. I really do. I wish it was that simple. Even if I get out of bed, even if I place my alarm clock all the way across the room, um, after I get up, I just fall back into bed sometimes. It's, it's really quite depressing when you think about it. I'm going to do this because this is what I what I've sometimes had to do in previous jobs. Mm-hmm. It does snowball into it's like I said it's a vicious cycle it's like every decision you make sometimes makes it worse yeah yeah yeah, that that happens a lot too. Sleeping is very, very. It's it's one of these weird things when you're depressed. It's like now I have energy. It's 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 a situation where you are trying to get to sleep sometimes, and you can't. You find yourself trying to distract yourself from sleep, even though you know sleep is essential to your well-being when you're at work or when you're trying to just live your life. It just. It just becomes a struggle even to sleep. Even if you enjoy the act of sleeping, it just becomes a struggle. So the guy upstairs is trying to talk to this character representing me at this moment. And, you know, conversing with others online, I had a person I conversed with on the escapist forums called Mephef, and I really wonder what happened to him, because he stopped, like, interacting with the site at all after a certain point. I enjoyed having conversations with him online. Those conversations were some of the most rewarding I've ever had. Maybe I was too into the conversations, I don't know. Maybe I chased him away, sometimes that's my fear. <sighs> See what I mean? Vicious cycle. Yeah, people do suck at understanding this sort of stuff sometimes.
distract myself. Yeah, I think that's what I would do in this situation with my current condition. Nothing be nothing is able to hold my attention. Like I like I said, I have hundreds of games, hundreds of little indie games on this Xbox 360 downloaded. And it's when I scroll through the list, I'm trying to look for something to play. I just don't want to play them. I just don't want to play anything. I just come back to the same couple of games for the easy kind of mental satisfaction that comes from finishing them or playing them some more. Well, at least this guy's able to see a therapist. I mean, I can't go to a doctor right now because it would cost me hundreds of dollars, which I can't afford. I'm waiting for my BC healthcare card so I can get treatment. It's very hard sometimes even to get yourself to do the things that'll help you the most. I'm gonna excuse myself to the bathroom. Mm-hmm. Huh. That was interesting. Just so you know, I'm really proud of you. Yeah, when you, even when you get praise during depression, it kind of like, you don't feel it. There's no way for your brain to process that information because it's always got this constant mental fog. Mental and physical kind of fog that it has to fight through and you, you just don't feel anything a lot of times. Insults will, will, they'll come through to you. Because you're in the state of mood where you're receptive to that sort of thing. Insults, criticisms, really anything negative you'll you'll feel. Like really badly. No matter how well intentioned those things are. Or how in jest they are. Shit just spirals. It's a negative feedback loop like this thing has said. Try to unwind with her before getting physical. <laughs> to us. To tonight. <laughs> yeah. I would try and be productive sometimes. I, I, you have to force yourself. You really do have to force yourself. I wish I could do that just with a simple click of a mouse sometimes. Answer Attic. Oh, 
Oh, so he was being cheated on. <laughs> no, I'm not going to go there. <clears throat> So we're just gonna take a look at the Greek chorus. So the everything seems to be working out for this guy. Cause clicking on a choice is easy. Clicking on something like this is easy. It's the motivation to get myself out of this situation that's very hard sometimes. All right. It was kind of a tense night between the two of you. Huh. <sighs> Everything's okay. I wish I could just do number two. In fact, I'm gonna let this guy be a little happy for once. <laughs> yeah, he he gets he gets happy. So if I'm speed running through this ending, it's just I can't relate to this ending because really this happened. I wish I wish this was happening to me. To be honest, I wish I could just like magic away my symptoms. It fucking hurts. I go to work and I get angry with people for ordering food. No, I I, tr I keep it contained because I try not to be a jerk, but it gets hard, you know. When your dad, when you tell your dad that you have depression, and he basically accuses you of faking your symptoms. And when your stepmother and dad come down, corner you, tell you that, as well as saying your depression is all your fault. And she said it in this tone of voice, your depression is all your fault. It's that sort of thing, just... I tried to kill myself that night, okay? It was so bad. Like, you have to imagine the pain. I had crippling inflammation in my foot one night. I'd rather have that a million times over than have depression again. Like, severe, severe depression like I had that night. Who am I even talking to? <sighs> At least he, he gets to move in with her. <sighs> you have to find things to keep you going, basically. And for me, it's been very hard to find stuff to keep me going. But I'm making it through just for you viewers. I guess you are kind of that thread. 2-dash.com, my work for that site helps me get through this sort of stuff. You know, if I haven't been able to do much for them over the past couple months, six months being able to relate to people is just a struggle a lot of times my stepmother tried to call me the other day the second I heard her voice I hung up she's not getting talked to for a very very long time 
But there is a happy ending to this, viewers. There always is. As long as you can get through it. Because I remember a sunny time. A time a couple years ago where I managed to get through one episode of depression. And it was, it was happiness. And I am confident that I will be able to... Able, I'm, not, I'm gonna be able to get through this, okay? I wish I could have the... Yeah. Okay, nope. Credits. Writing code. Patrick Lindsay, writing, editing, lead grumbler. <laughs> yep. So, Depression Quest, the game, is. It's. Technically, yeah, it's technically a game. It does have video elements. It does have musical elements, interactive elements to it beyond just the clicking of the choices. So it's beyond a choose-your-own-adventure book. I would describe it as a very, very well-written kind of fort adventure into um, trying to deal with situations like depression, which are very, very... It's just a very, very complicated disease. No one really, no, I don't think it'll ever be truly fully understood because the human brain is such a complex kind of thing. It's basically an organic computer. I'm going to try to do my best to make this channel something for you viewers, whoever that you are. It's a place where you can... Just whittle your worries away with video games, with music, all that sorts of things. If you've ever gone through depression or knew a friend who had depression, leave some comments down below and I'll read them and I'll reply to them as best as I can. Because this is a depression is something you need help getting through you really do need help wherever it may come from <sighs> I'm sorry if this was a bit too personal but um, this is a game I needed to get through I think I my outlook has been improved by the fact that this game exists. It lets us know that we're not alone in this struggle, no matter what. And if you ever wind up in a situation where you feel desperately alone, um, it, something as simple as talking to a person online can be all the difference in the world. Talk to someone you really trust, though. Like, really, really trust. Someone you've had good banter with, someone who you understand to a certain extent. If you just let off on strangers or people who are suspicious of depression and think it's just laziness, well, then you're just out of luck, aren't you? This has been Thoughtful Saul taking a look at Depression Quest by Zoe Quinn, Patrick Lindsay, and Isaac Schindler. It's available for free on Steam. Free. And I'll see you next time.